Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me with Coding with Christine Hall. Today, I have Betsy Nicoletti. She is the founder of Coding Intel. Betsy, I love your slogan for your company at the corner of coding and getting paid. That is really cool. A um, couple of little things before we go ahead and get started. Today is National Patient Appreciation Day, or at least that's what the text message I got from my primary carrier this morning told me. <laughs> I found that I was looking, and today is also um, the history of National President's Presidential Joke Day. Like we oh. were, yeah. And so the the President Kennedy was a jokester. There was a couple of other um, presidents that were jokesters, but the one that goes down in history was Ronald Reagan. So he got caught pulling a joke, but he didn't know that he was on air. So he went on NPR for his Saturday evening radio show. And he said, uh, my fellow Americans, I am pleased to tell you that today I have signed legislation that will outlaw Russia forever. We will begin bombing in five minutes. And he didn't know that they were live. So, <laughs> Yeah, that was kind of funny. I thought that's that would have been that I did remember Ronald Reagan being a jokester. So that was kind of funny. And um, and I don't have any foodie foodie uh, national day for anybody, but it is national s'more day was yesterday. So I think I'm going to celebrate that for a little bit. Um, anyway, so I want to talk more about coding Intel. I, I've been a subscriber for a, a long time and uh, I've always used your words as my guidance, um, as the resources that you provide, such authoritative resources, so many solutions, and you're always providing continuing education. So I, I love that. And one of your specialties is dermatology. So that's kind of how we met. Yes. Although, of course, I knew of you. Your reputation <laughs> preceded you. <laughs> as does yours, my friend. Um, so dermatology, how did you get, how did you fall into dermatology? How did dermatology become one of your specialties? Well, like a lot of things, it was through the back door. And by the way, thank you for your kind words. I appreciate those. Um, I, I've, most of my career I've spent working in primary care and then added some general surgery in a very limited way, mostly the skin procedures. Don't, don't ask me to do that open abdominal case for you. <laughs> and so a lot of the codes were, the, were there. And then I began working with some dermatology practices and you know, you learn on the job. Right. You study the CPT book, you pull out the CPT assistant and mm -hmm. before you know it, you're, you're reasonably proficient in the specialty especially since I had a background in the skin procedures that primary care doctors do, which is mm -hmm. of course a more limited set. And then some of the things that um, general surgery was doing. Gotcha. So a little over. I, I find dermatology to be fascinating, quite honestly. Um, it's it, that one for me is, is definitely in my top five love all things dermatology. Um, but it can be kind of tricky to code dermatology. And I know that especially in South Florida, where I am at, there's always a conflict because our providers really feel compelled to do a full skin exam. And one of the problems that we have is that it, the full skin exam in, in a preventive sense is not a covered service with most payers. And it's not even recognized by the uh, U.S. Preventive Task Force as a necessary preventive service. So that becomes quite challenging. How, how do you handle that particular situation where morally and ethically it's the right thing to do, but from a payer's perspective, it's not really their job to pay for that? Yeah. Um, that is tough for dermatology. Um, and I think in, in the sun states and even in you know New England in the non-sun states, um, dermatologists do feel that they should, that there are certain patients who warrant a full body skin exam every year. And, you know, as a coder, all I can do is code it, you know, mm -hmm. and 
Unfortunately, from a coding perspective, sometimes they leave off the screening skin exam diagnosis code. And if they say the patient's here for a full body exam, then I am going to apply the diagnosis code for the screening. Um, whether they want to do that when they submit the claim or not is their issue, but I'm going to say I'm following ICD-10 guidelines. You know, if I had my ICD-10 book in the front, we'd look mm -hmm. and we'd see what those guidelines are. Mm -hmm. And the guidelines are if the patient comes in for a screening, we use the screening as the first diagnosis. And then anything that we find is the second, third, and fourth and additional diagnoses. So that's what I tell them. So that is one of the main problems in dermatology is the screening skin exam, not having an A or a B rating from the US Preventative Services Task Force. I, I find that to be so challenging. And, and you, the one thing that you said is, I, I repeat this to my students a lot, um, coding is a science, it is there. What does it say? Patient here for full skin exam, they're getting an encounter code and that's how we code it. It's the billing side that's more of an art because they have to know the different payer policies. They have to understand that this is a screening service that's not covered on the billing side. But from a coding perspective, the, the guidelines are quite clear. This yeah. is how we code it. Um, and so there's always this, this little disruption happening between coding and billing because some things just aren't going to get paid by the payer. Some things are going to be the patient's responsibility. And that's yeah. so tough to live in that dual world there. Yes, it um, is. I know that you and I have talked about the OIG work plan where they actually called out dermatologists for modifier 25. And um, that's modifier 25 is truly a struggle. How, what do you see with modifier 25? So I always say reasonable coders can disagree about modifier 25 on the, uh, not on the edges, mm -hmm. you know, patient presents for the biopsy. Okay. We did a biopsy versus <laughs> patient presents with multiple problems. And then we also do a biopsy. So on the, on the edges, um, I think it's, there's some black and white, but then there's a lot in the middle. And I really believe that neither CPT nor Medicare has defined it well for us. So it leaves us to operationalize it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we can repeat over when you go to anybody's site and we can repeat over and over and over again, well, it has to be a separate significantly <laughs> identifiable surface. Well, what does that mean? And Christine, you had, when we were getting ready here, you said you want to see a treatment plan that's new or modified. That mm -hmm. seems pretty reasonable. Um, I, the, the, the CPT, CPT has a book, uh, Principles of CPT Coding, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And there's just this one page about it where it, it, it's a flow chart. It really doesn't say anything different except is the, work documented typical pre and post procedure work. So sometimes that helps me. <clears throat> I look at a note and I can say, well, what did we do? We yeah. looked at the site. We asked a few questions. We um, prepped the patient. We did the procedure. And then we, ident we gave them the post procedure um, information. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that definition helps me. And I think it helps clinicians. So what part of what you've documented was the pre-work for doing that excision and the post-work for the excision? That's included in your payment for the excision. Absolutely. Um, I think in derm it's hard because the patient may come in for the excision and then we do a full body exam, we find something else. That's so true. And, and I do see that a lot. I see that a lot. But I was talking to a, a group of dermatologists not too long ago, and I said, well, let me ask you a question. Do you walk into every room with a scalpel ready to go, ready to cut? And they said, no, of course not. And I said, so are you telling me that you would go in and 
talk to the patient first and find out where the lesion, examine the lesion, make the decision of how you wanted to remove that or maybe what type of biopsy you want to do. I said, that is all considered to be part of that procedure. If, if you know, nobody runs in with a scalpel, we understand that. But you have to tell me what did you do beyond make the decision that this should be removed by shave biopsy, right? Or this should be, you know, that's the, that's the approach you're going to use. So it's very difficult for them to, to understand that. And then, like you said, if they continue to look at the skin, they're going to find other things. And that's when I tell them, well, what's your treatment plan for those other things that are not surgical? Please show it to me. Let me see either a new or a modified treatment plan for those conditions that truly require treatment. I have a lot of little things all over my face and arms that are popping up almost on a daily basis, which I don't know about all that, but um, <laughs> some of them we're not going to do anything about. We're right. just going to, I got some SK going on and that just stinks. Yeah. You know, I think the way you described it is very, very clear in terms of what that pre-work is and that that's part of the payment for the procedure. Sometimes depending on the group, they may want to see um, the CMS time file mm -hmm. or that shows how much time is, you know, before the procedure and after the procedure, or they might want to see the Medicare fee schedule that shows what percentage of the payment is pre-evaluation, is, is pre-procedure work, what percentage of the payment is for the procedure and what is post-procedural work. Sometimes that can help. The, the problem with the time file is that it's um, survey data. And mm -hmm. so it's not very reliable. Yeah. But the other thing that you said you mentioned was that that um, payment division showing the pre payment and the post payment. And I, I use that very literal when I'm explaining modifier 25. And I show, OK, so explain to me you have you know, 10% or 20% or of this payment is for the pre-work of it. You have to show me what you did that warrants this 100% payment over here that is does not include anything that you're already getting paid for. Why right. are they going to pay you a whole nother evaluation and management when they're really already including that in this payment here? Or yeah. should we just reduce that payment that amount of money because you're not doing a pre or post work, which nobody does. But I'm just saying like in theory that that's the way I explain it is you're already getting paid. So you have to justify why you need more. And again, I want to see either a new treatment plan for a condition or a modified updated treatment plan to accommodate that exacerbation. Well, I think one of the problems with modifier 25 is that specialties are so different. So if you have a patient who goes into the emergency department with coughing up blood and shortness of breath, we wouldn't expect the pulmonologist to not do a pretty good evaluation before they decided to do a bronchoscopy. And, and yet that's just modifier 25 as well. So mm -hmm. it's the situations are so varied um, clinically from specialty to specialty. So very true. So very true. So, so uh, I usually ask, like, what's your favorite code to report? Um, do you have a favorite, maybe subspecialty in dermatology that you enjoy? Um, I don't think I have a, a favorite. I, I find them challenging, all of them, because of the templates. So, mm. um, the, one of the challenges about the dermatology codes is some of them are defined by location and size. Some are defined just by the procedure, the method of the procedure. Right. And so when I, I'm sympathetic to people who are building the templates in the EMR because basically they have to be by category of code. You know, I, I don't, from a coding perspective, from a clinical perspective, that's one thing, but from a coding <laughs> I need different fields, whether it's a destruction of a lesion or it's um, a, a biopsy or it's an excision. So I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say that I have a favorite code, 
but I would say that when I'm um, coding them, I do find it challenging and, mm -hmm. you know, it works my brain. I, it is, I agree. You're not, you're not phone, at least, you know, maybe people who do dermatology morning, noon, and night and know their provider's templates don't find it quite so challenging as somebody like me who's looking at different templates every time. And I'm not 100% in derm. Yeah, I, I struggle a lot too with the different templates as they're provided by the different EMR companies. And, and I have to tell providers, part of the problem might be that template because mm -hmm. whether you had the EMR company design the template, those are going to be your analytical people. They're not coders designing a template for you. And so they're not going to be able to meet all of those metrics you're going to need to get your team together. And often I'll recommend that during your compliance meetings, that's a good time. If you've got a good team together, a clinical team, the billing team, the coding team, the administrative team together, that's a great time to, to modify those templates because you've got someone representing all of the different departments of an organization, of a practice, yeah. and they'll all be able to add those little things in that template that are necessary from every component, clinical, coding, billing, you know, getting all of that information together. So yeah. the EMRs for me sometimes are probably the most challenging because of the differential and the templates there. They don't all have the same information. And providers, again, they just wanna treat patients. They don't understand that we are trying to code this appropriately, or you know, and then of course the billing department trying to, to get reimbursed for it. They that's and we don't want them to most of the time. We want them to just be clinical, but it's it is challenging. It's very difficult. Yeah. Um, in most of the practices you work with, who selects those codes for the minor procedures? The provider or the coder? the provider most of the time. And then the coder reviews them so that they can provide any recommendations. But most of the practices that I've worked with, it's the provider who is selecting those codes or yeah. whatever the computer assist is recommending they select. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's difficult. I, I find in private practices, it does tend to be still the physician and P or PA who selects all of the codes. And then there's some kind of a, a scrubbing, whether that's you know your computer edits or whether somebody physically looks and makes sure things are appropriate. However, that happens in the practice. I find in some hospital-owned practices that um, procedures mm -hmm. are more likely to be uh, coders. No, we're talking about dermatology, but I'll just say in primary care. Yeah, the primary care doctor is not doing dozens of these every week. So in dermatology, you're doing dozens of these every week. You can code them, right? But if you're in a if you're doing something unusual, then um, I really do think a lot of things ought to go to the coder. Oh, I agree. A way to flag it, you know, so that um, uh, I often will say with the coder's permission, you know. So if it takes you thirty seconds to look up that code, great. But if you're getting to two minutes, then flag it and let someone else look at it for you. You go on to the next patient. Yes, that is wonderful advice, Betsy. I hope that we have some clinicians that will listen to our podcast today and take that uh, information there. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about were what resources do you find that you usually go to? Now, I'm a CMS junkie. I'm not going to lie. I live, breathe, everything CMS. Right now I'm, I'm swimming in the proposal. Love it. Uh, <laughs> you're, so, you're so good. You love the codes. You love the CMS proposal. <laughs> no, I am. So I tell my students that too. I'm like, when we start talking, when we start teaching, um, you're going to find that my love just seems to flow over into many different things. Um, yeah. So but definitely CMS is my go-to, but if for dermatology, I love going to the uh, AAD. I find them to be very helpful with resources and things of that nature. I have a one of my dermatology champions, they have provided me with a login to the AAD 
And, and so now I can access my login, but I can access that more, utilize that resource a little bit more than um, just the free part of it. Is yeah. there any other resources that you tend to to go to more for dermatology or if, even, you know, for any specialty, where, where's your focus? Well, uh, I mean, I agree with you. We want to go to the source citations. So we want CPT and um, the CPT assistant. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I buy in paper every year is the CPT changes and insider's view because it gives you the clinical examples which sometimes say absolutely nothing, like the care management ones. <laughs> remote care management. You go and read the clinical example, and you're like, I have no idea. <laughs> but I, 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 like, I like the CPT changes and insider's view. And of yes. course, the assistant. What I say to people is we've got to go to our source citations first. So CPT, the front of the book for the um, ICD-10 guidelines, HICPICS, of course, Sometimes when I want to go back and find something in the CMS final rule, I can't remember what year. I shouldn't say sometimes, I say frequently. And the, <laughs> the, the trick that I do for that is to look and see in what year I get out my CPT book and see in what year it was in the CPT changes and insider's view. Oh, so transitional care management started in, I can't remember, 1988 or 2022. I can't remember offhand, right, but right, right. there. And then I can go back and find the CMS final rule for that year and see what they said. Um, so that is the best advice I have received in a long time, Betsy. Thank you. That is so smart because I'm so, like you. I I read the proposal year after year after year, and I have a hard time remembering. Was that 99 or was it? Nope. It was. Oh, I don't know. That is such a great solution. Go to CPT, look for when it was a CPT change. That's yeah. incredible. Thank you. <laughs> that, that, that helps because you can't find things. And then I say the special, the second resource is our specialty societies. So, mm -hmm. you know, I like, I write articles all the time. I hope they're helpful for people. You know, we read the AAPC journal. I, they're helpful to me. I'm sure the articles are helpful to other people. Mm -hmm. And often they give you the, the citations or the footnotes tell you where to go back because there's always a group that says, I want to see that in writing. Oh, yes. And they're not interested in your journal article. Right. But the right. journal article, which explains it nice and clearly, will often tell you where to go to find the source citation so that you can then show me that in writing and uh, which can be helpful for some groups. Absolutely. And, and there was another thing that I noticed, um, you know, we, we worked on a project together, is that you cite, sometimes you cite the OIG's reports of findings, so, or, or a previous case. There was a, a U.S. attorney's case where there, there was some case notifications, you know, case law that came out of a, a recent case. And, and I found that to be very interesting and helpful especially when I am trying to explain something, maybe in a report of findings that I can reference, reference this case or reference this OIG report um, and, and use that specific terminology. Because if it, if it caused them to have some concern, then yeah. I want to pass that concern on to the, the clients that I'm working with, dermatologists, coders, and, and, and you know, just as an additional educational opportunity. Yeah. I, I think that it, it really does help. Some some of the documents written by Medicare and the OIG, I don't know where the noun and the verb is in the sentence, you know, they're like, but then there are others where it's written really clearly and they've said it better than I could ever phrase it. And so if I can quote them, I want to do it. Absolutely. I, I find that I find that fascinating. And um, I spend a lot of time reading. So I always share with with my friends that my husband loves to watch some of the craziest shows on TV. And most of the time, I'm just going to be honest, I don't really, I'm not into reality TV. He is. So we'll sit next to each other and I'll have my little earbuds in with my iPad reading 
you know, something that's that recently came out, some update, some right now we've got so much to read uh, with the proposal, which is 2,066 pages, the, the ICD-10 guidelines and updates for 2023, the new E&M guidelines for 2023. So I'm reading and I'm doing my thing while we're spending time. And he has no idea that I have no clue who, the, who those people digging for gold in the... <laughs> <laughs> the the pawn shop and while driving a boat to some location to fit like he doesn't know that I don't know any of that but uh, love our resources. So there's one other thing I think I'll just mention in terms and again it's not specialty specific to dermatology but is to be careful about nurse practitioners and physicians assistants and making sure you understand the difference between shared services and incident two. Oh my gosh. And that you're billing things appropriately under the right clinician, because there it is a, a compliance error, if you get it wrong, where you can collect a lot more money than you were entitled to. And you know, if you, uh, if you send something in wrong and they deny it and you don't collect any money, even if it was a total error, you didn't collect any money. Right. But, you know, you fix it, maybe you will. But um, when you're working with a group that has nurse practitioners and PAs, and a lot of Durham has, you know, both mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. Surgical specialties seem to like the PAs in their practices. You want to make sure you're billing for those correctly, those professionals correctly, so you don't get in trouble. Absolutely. That was a, that's, that's one of the identified errors from 1998 by the OIG using inappropriate NPI numbers. Um, so I, I have to constantly remind people that incident two is a Medicare benefit. It is right. not a collaboration agreement between two people. It is not, um, is not recognized by the other payers. It's a Medicare benefit. And split and shared have different definitions in CPT and by CMS. So you have to understand the art, again, of the billing rules as opposed to the coding science. Um, and it's, it's difficult. Another thing that I remind people is if you read in CPT, they tell us that those NPPs, QHPs, extenders, mid-levels, whatever you like to call the physician assistants, nurse practitioners, clinical nurse specialists, um, when they're working in a group practice, they are of the same specialty and subspecialty. So it had come up, of course, after all these years, we've heard absolutely everything, but oh, no, 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 my, my PA, my NP is of a different specialty. So we can bill that as a new visit, not when they're working in a group practice. So just a reminder there. Yeah, we're coming to the end, but I do want to say this. There, the MAC here in New England um, processes all NPs as one specialty. So if you, if you have a multi-specialty group and the nurse practitioner in Durham sees the patient and then the nurse practitioner in ortho sees the patient, that second one processes as established. Yeah. And not as related to their specialty. So even though CMS in their, um, uh, did they do that in their proposed rule? I think they did talk about that issue, but um, they don't process claims that way. Right. Whereas right. the private payers do. So yeah. So you have to understand the art of billing very, very well. And, and I'm teaching the billing uh, course for AAPC. And I got to tell you that I'm so impressed with the amount of people that are starting to become educated in billing because it wasn't learn on the job type of thing for many, many years. Oh, you yeah. just got transitioned into the billing department. And now to see so many people that are interested in learning, learning NCCI, learning LCD, NCD, payer policy, learning when a modifier is appropriate or not. Um, those people, I got to give my hats off round of applause for wanting to understand our that that art as right. well as uh, the the classes do give that information they do teach that specific art um, as opposed to the the science the coding science there <laughs> so we have a lot of people on today i'm so excited i love to see the same faces here my friend pam vanderbilt char I'm so glad to see you, Julie. Julie Davis and I had um, dinner the other day in Denver. She took wow. me to this 
awesome place. And I had bison for the first time. So thanks, Julie. Um, I, I do want to remind you that uh, check out Betsy, check out Coding Intel. Again, for me, it's one of the staples. I, I keep it up on my, my desktop all the time for references. There are guides. Um, the membership is so affordable. And considering all the things that you get from Betsy, from Coding Intel, I mean, please check it out and Thank become you. a subscriber today. You need, you need her information. She also provides us with a monthly webinar. There's CEUs. So much information. Incredible, Betsy. Thank you for all that you do. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me today. This was fun. <laughs> well, good. I hope that you come back because I know that you have a lot of specialties under your belt. So we're mm -hmm. going to be chatting and I and I hope that you do have the time to come back and join us and share more information. And um, it's been a pleasure. It's been truly a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, we will see you in two weeks. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, and I'll talk with you soon. Thanks for watching.